So what's going to happen when I drop this egg from a great height? Let's see and find out. Well, why does the egg break? Well, that's because it's a concept of physics and in particular dealing with the concept of impulse. So today we're going to discuss how changes in momentum is affected by forces and time and how we can prevent the egg from breaking and also apply that to situations that you're familiar with such as airbags and crumple zones in cars. So stay tuned. Now before we start, let's quickly define the term momentum. Now we often say that an object has momentum, but what does that mean? Well, it's an object, so it has mass. So a moving truck will have more momentum than a moving bullet. But there lies the other important factor. It has to be moving. If an object is stationary, then it has no momentum. So momentum is simply the product of those two variables, the mass multiplied by the velocity. Now, since velocity is a vector, that means it has a magnitude and a direction. So therefore, momentum also is a vector. So let's look at this picture. So here I have a bullet and a truck racing towards each other. So here's my truck and here's my bullet. So what can we tell about their momenta? Well, clearly their momenta are different because the momentum of the truck is in the positive direction. The momentum of the bullet is in the negative direction. It's a vector quantity. But is it possible that the two objects can actually have exactly the same momentum? Well, let's put some data here. So we have a 50 caliber bullet and it's going to be 50 grams. Let's make our truck 4,000 kilograms. Now our bullet is probably going to be flying around 583 meters per second. So what velocity does the truck have to go at? Now, if I work out this in terms of the momentum and the symbol we use for momentum is P, I'll have MV and that is equal to 550 by 10 to the power of negative three, of course it's an SI unit, multiplied by my 583, and I'm going to get a value of 42.65 kilogram meters per second. So my truck, in order to have the same momentum, will need the same value. So 42.65 kilogram meters per second is equal to my 4,000 kilograms multiplied by some value of V. Well, that V ends up being 0 0.01 approximately meters per second, in other words, one centimeter per second. So a truck's traveling at one centimeter per second is going to have the same momentum as my bullet traveling at 583 meters per second. Now in this video, of course, we're interested in what happens when momentum changes. And to start, we're gonna look at Newton's second law. Why? Because in his work, Principia, he actually discussed the second law in terms of momentum. Now Newton's second law is often taught as this, that the force or the net force is equal to the mass multiplied by the acceleration. But let's see how we can look at this from the way that Newton looked at it. Now we know that the acceleration is equal to the change of velocity with respect to time. So if I put that into this equation here, I'm gonna get m outside of v minus u over t. And of course I can clean that up. I'm gonna get mv minus mu over t. Now, can you see here what I have on the numerator? I have what we call the change in momentum. So the change in momentum over time is equal to the net force being applied. Or another way I can write this is, is that the change of momentum is equal to the force multiplied by the time that that force acts. So there is actually a definition of our Newton's second law, not in terms of F equals MA, but the rate of change of momentum is the net force. Now this thing here of delta mv is called the impulse, or sometimes we write just simply i, and it is equal to, to the product of the force times the time. So what's this saying? Well, if you have two situations where you have the same change of momentum, then you can actually have different forces for different times. You can have an increase in time that will decrease the force and vice versa. A decrease in time will mean an increase in forces required to do that. So now let's look back at our egg. When the egg reaches the ground, it arrives with a certain velocity and thus it has a certain momentum. It experiences a force that changes that momentum, in this case, to a value of zero. Now, since the time for it to do so is extremely small, the force required to do that ends up being very large. And of course the egg breaks, 
not discounting the fact that the liquid contents has inertia and escapes in all directions. Now what about dropping it on the sponge? The sponge in effect increases the time for the egg to stop, so as a result the force that it experiences ends up being much lower. So the same change in momentum, the same impulse, but different forces due to different times. Now it's the same reason why sports people catch the ball drawing their hands backward. It lessens the force experienced on the hands. Now obviously, if I drop the egg from a greater height, I change the impulse. In other words, I change the change of momentum. And so if I want to prevent the egg from breaking, I'm going to need a larger sponge. And of course, if the object bounces, then the change of momentum is going to be greater because the final momentum is now a non-zero value in the negative direction. And therefore the force is going to be greater. So let's apply this to car safety. In the early days of car design, cars were built very sturdy with a rigid chassis. The idea is that sturdiest means it's safer and tougher. But the fatalities were increasing even at lower velocities and that was concerning. And in the early 1950s, Mercedes-Benz developed the first crumple zones in the car. This is the deliberate construction of the front ends of the cars to crumple to absorb energy. And so basically arguing that let's build cars weaker and as a result, passengers will be safer. So how does impulse work here? Well, by increasing time for the car to come to a stop, the average force that the car experiences decreases. And so therefore, so does the deceleration. And the passenger experiences a lower g-force, which results in lower chances of a catastrophic injury. Now the same is with airbags. A head collision with the steering wheel will result in a high force experience due to the very short time involved in the changing momentum of the head. So let's increase the time by slowing it down with an inflatable pillow. So the airbag was designed. Again, by increasing the time for the change of momentum, the average force is decreased. Now it is important to note that surviving a collision isn't just about crumple zones and airbags. There's a limit to the g-forces that you can sustain. So your initial velocity, or should I say your initial momentum, is also important. The airbag may be very effective in improving the survival of collisions at say at 60 kilometers an hour, but they're less so effective if you're traveling over 100 kilometers an hour. Well, I hope that's helped you understand the concept of momentum, impulse, and how force and time are related to those concepts. Please make sure you press the bell when you subscribe, press like, and put a comment down below if this has been particularly helpful for you. Check out my website for not only a list of all my videos, but also other resources to help you with your physics endeavors. And have a look at my Twitter as well. My name is Paul from High School Physics Explained. Take care. Bye for now.